Okay, this model is just dry fitted together at the moment, so I'll dismantle it to show you how I construct it. The tail fin is 10 millimeter thick. It's two pieces of five millimeter Depron foam glued together, and then I sand off and do a wedge shape, a sharp edge on all of it, and I just cover it with plain cello tape, must sticky tape. Underneath, you can see here, I've got four millimeter carbon fiber tubes. I usually only put one on the elevator. I don't usually put one. I've added one on this uh, stabilizer on the front this time. In between the two pieces of five millimeter Depron, the hinges are glued inside. I've usually got three. One there, one here where the servo and the horn, where the horn will come off, and one at the other side. So that's really simple to make, like any construction with Depron foam. Now, I'll just move this over a bit. That's a look at the Depron foam. I roll that. I start with a flat sheet and then I just use a piece of 20 or 25 millimeter round plastic poly pipe and you, I literally just massage and roll it on the, on, the, on the Depron and I use a flat straight edge to bend it up. In the middle, you, if you put a very small crease down the middle on the inside, about only about half a millimetre, one millimetre deep. It will help to give you that, that nice knife edge shape around the front, the round shape on the profile. So I start with the five mil Depron and I add the, the sticky tape onto it. I, I go this way with the sticky tape. It's two inches wide of sticky tape. You might be able to see that. And after I've done that impression down the front leading edge, then I just fold it up and I keep rolling it and massaging it with that round rod to get the airfoil shape as close as it is so that there's, it doesn't need a lot of variation. You don't have to be perfect because you can see it will quite easily change. But the closer you get it, the better, better of an airfoil shape it'll hold. Now, I'll do this one. The undercarriage is just simple four millimeter solid carbon fiber rod. Move that camera down. Get more. Okay, the in the motor pods are just very simple to make. I start out with uh, just a U-shaped piece of aluminium and inside there you can see I've cut the aluminium and pressed and done some right angle folds to hold the servo. The linkages like I showed before are just very simple straightforward. They're only like one or 1.2 millimeter wire. You want to keep that very short to stop that wire bending. You want to keep that nice and light. You don't really need ball joints and links. That's all extra weight and a lot of work you don't need. You just want to make sure there's no tolerance in it, that it's very stiff and, and not, not any play. So that's a simple part to make. There's many different ways to do that. I've, I've done three different techniques and they all work. It just depends what you prefer. Now the the wings I do make removable, but because it's too difficult to remove the whole wing in one piece with all the wires from the motor and the servos and the speed controllers, so the outer wing panels basically just have one servo about here to a balsa wood aileron. And the balsa wood aileron is usually roughly 10 millimeters tapered down to about 2 millimeters. And it's usually about 40 to 50 millimeters wide. So this, that's the inner wing section. Same technique again.
just show you a closer look up of how the wing is is done what I've got here this is just solid bits of plywood so that those four millimeter um, struts for the undercarriage just push up into a four millimeter hole very simple easy to replace if it breaks you just pull it out and stuff and put some glue underneath and put a new one in these are 10 millimeter carbon fiber spars which are hollow they're eight millimeters inside the wing spars are eight millimeters by six millimeters these are six millimeters by four millimeters on the wing the internal wing is the eight millimeters by six millimeters so the idea is it can easily remove the wings I just have some quick release clips usually under here I have a little pieces of one millimeter wire quick release clips little piece of wood that goes in and a, a clip you release it with now the fuselage is the same again it's just a simple piece of Depron foam it's more decorative than anything it only adds a very small amount of structural integrity it makes the tail a little bit more rigid once again I do the same technique I use like a I use a broom handle for this one because it's really long and I just roll a uh, I flex up the piece of Depron foam and roll it with the broom handle till I get the and keep working until I get the sh desired shape that I want the uh, rear motor will be roughly in that position there now here's the fuselage which is actually it looks complicated but it's a lot simpler than you think this is just a box made up it's roughly uh, 80 millimeters wide by about 70 72 millimeters high and underneath it has like a 19 or 20 millimeter recess so that you can obviously fit your spar tube and do your stiffener with ply inside the carbon fiber I also put in small pieces of carbon fiber and epoxy it in so it makes that super strong because this is pulling some really high G's at 150 kilometers an hour I can pull up almost full full elevator at high speed and it won't break the wing the wings do flex a lot though I've seen the wings flexing at least four four inches each side okay so that's standard construction if you've done much building with uh, radio control planes there's no rocket science to it this here obviously is for the rear motor a little bit hard to explain but that follows the fuselage line from the front of the fuselage up to the tail the motor and the the motor and the propeller will both line up on that same angle and that actually helps you for flying when there's a headwind and when I have the front motors on I'll just put it back on to show you in hover mode I set my propellers up to roughly about a bit hard to say whatever that is maybe eight seven or eight degrees and that rear motor has the same issue it's about seven or eight degrees so the advantage is when you've got a headwind and you're hovering into the headwind it's staying stationary it's not fighting if you have the motors level well now the whole plane has to tilt a bit like a multi-rotor and the wind the wind will be hitting the wing and pushing you down and you'll need more power to hold it to keep it up so if all your motors are slightly tilted forward you can hover in some pretty strong winds and the advantage is when it is an advantage to fly in the wind about usually five to ten mile an hour is a real advantage because you're already flying while you're in hover mode and that when you transition it easily transitions within one and a half two seconds I've set my transition timing for three seconds which I find is enough okay now so the construction is very simple I just use balsa and I soak it all in cyanoacetate to make it really rigid you don't want any twist here it's very strong 
same with that way you want it very strong as well um, can't really elaborate more on it uh, oh yeah here we go I'll show you where all the components go the flight controller basically goes there and under, underneath the battery obviously goes in here and you've got a huge leeway to move your battery long leeway so you can put a GoPro here or whatever you want you can put you can even have the battery right from the back right up to the front I've actually put a bulkhead in here because I don't change it that much usually the battery sits around about this position and I put some rubber foam under there and a little bit of rubber foam here styrofoam or something like that okay that's about it for this little video. I'll add another one shortly.